Okay, so today we are going to uh, add another uh, brick to our um, React uh, uh, castle, and uh, uh, this will be the handling of forms, basically. So you, we already had a look at how forms uh, worked in, uh, in basic HTML, in HTML5. Uh, so we got more or less familiar with the main uh, form elements, and how, this, uh, how does it translate into the React world? Um, uh, the, the, what we saw that when we were say, dealing with basic forms is that uh, basically they have uh, an inconsistent behavior for, for historical reasons, different uh, form elements uh, evolved in different ways uh, and actually they had uh, different uh, type of uh, events and different type of properties. So for example, reading a value for, from a radio button is not the same as reading it from a checkbox uh, and it's not the same as reading it from uh, from a uh, drop-down menu, for example. So they all have slightly different attributes and slightly different ways uh, of expressing them in in HTML. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for uh, for example, uh, radio buttons, checkboxes, text areas, uh, they all have a, a very different behavior. So what React is doing is uh, uh, trying to uh, um, make a uniform view of all these uh, uh, different behaviors so that it, in some way it redefines the properties and it redefines the um, events that the different uh, form uh, controls are generating into what they call the synthetic events. Uh, so they are, um, they are not the real, we, are, we will not be working with the real DOM events, but we're working with some React internal event that in some way tries to, to um, to wrap the, the basic uh, low-level event into something which is more more uniform. Uh, for example, for all um, form controls, the value attributes always holds the current value of the field. Okay, um, it's not uh, the default uh, in HTML. It doesn't happen this way. But in React, uh, we can be sure that uh, uh, element dot value. Uh, will always have the, the current value of the field. And the value attribute is always uh, read and write, okay? So you can read the value attributes uh, to know what the user typed, uh, but we can also uh, set the value attribute to a new value and it, that will update. And whether that it's a, a text field that will just update its, its string content, or whether it's, a, I don't know, a drop-down menu where updating the selected item would mean adding a selected attribute to one of the options, so it's very complex to do it normally, uh, it, it works, okay? So whether you read or write the value attribute, uh, you are always, uh, um, uh, say, managing the current uh, uh, selected value uh, for any, any control, okay? Uh, we also have a default value which is a different attribute uh, that is set to, oh, it's optional. Uh, it's a default that is set uh, to the to the um, to the, om, the to the DOM element to the form control in at the creation time. So the first time you create uh, uh, an element before the user starts typing, you can assign a default value that will be changed immediately as soon as the user types or writes or selects something. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, strange uh, for uh, controls like the, the text area and the select uh, attribute uh, use this convention. So, if you look at the HTML documentation, you will see a different way of getting the content of the text area. For example, it's the inner text. Uh, but in, in React, uh, we still and always use value. So, it's all very uniform. And also for um, uh, the updating of the element, uh, all the elements are firing an event called change. Okay, so you can set an on change attribute to uh, to detect whenever the user types something in a in a in a text input or uh, changes the the selected uh, uh, items in a in a drop down list or uh, clicks or selects or deselects um, a checkbox and and all the other say manipulation you can do with forms they will always fire the on change attribute so basically the two uh, uh, main attributes that work for every uh, form elements are the value and the on change you can be sure that they are always there and they always have the same behavior um, Okay, uh, on change 
it's also different from what it, um, it does in, in HTML. For example, in, uh, in, in HTML, on change only fires when you're typing a text area. On change, it will always fire when you leave the text area and go somewhere else. Okay, so after you type something. In React, on change will also fire at every keystroke. So if you're writing ABC, on change will fire three times after A, after B, when you, the value will be AB. And after C, when the value will be A, B, C. So again, it's different, but you, it allows you to process and intercept every keystroke. And at the same time, it forces you to, uh, to process every keystroke. So it's a double-headed sword, um, but uh, we will see that how it will fit together very well with the handing of the value. Uh, and again, this uh, on change is, uh, is evenly uh, implemented across the different fields. That is a good uh, point. And the, the synthetic events uh, actually give the callback function a special event object uh, that uh, uh, has some property, which is a, as a superset of the DOM event uh, that has some standard properties and some additional properties that depend on the type of event and depend on, on the type of the source for that event. Uh, the most important attribute of the event, so this event will be uh, a parameter of the callback. So we, we are writing something like on change. Okay, we get, a, uh, uh, we register, sorry, on change, we are in JSX. So let me write it somewhere else, on change. It's an attribute. We define the value of the attribute in JavaScript. That will be a callback uh, where we receive an event. And we do something. So let me mute you all. Uh, we receive an event and we are doing something, so something with the, this event value, with this event object. Okay, so we have this. Uh, parentheses which are for and for defining the JavaScript and the inner parentheses for uh, for, um, for defining the body of the, call, the of the callback. Okay, <clears throat> so I, an event handler is a, normally a narrow function that receives one parameter uh, of type event object, synthetic event object. Uh, and uh, inside the function here, we may use uh, the attributes or the information about uh, this event that has been generated and uh, just that the fired uh the, the change event in this case some of the properties are standard so all uh, events have this set of properties uh, we can see that the most important one is target we also in html we have this attributes uh, that points to uh, the um, node that generated the um the the, the event that, that caused the event basically so if we are on a uh, and on an input element, uh, the and I, we are typing something into an input element. Uh, well, the target will point to the input element itself. Um, the source of event is uh, in React, so it's still the React component that generates that. So we can access the the, the property of that event of that element at the still at the virtual DOM level, not in in the real DOM. Um, if we have some name attribute of uh, on the input element, we can also access that. So if we have maybe many different text inputs, uh, we can give a different name to each of them. We should give a different name to each of that, uh, and we can uh, access it, or we can recognize which one fired the event. So the name attribute could be useful if you want to define one single callback that will handle modification from different, many different, or several different um, inputs, uh, so that by querying the name, you understand which one, let's say, was changed. And uh, um, just remember that this, the name attribute, as well as the value attribute, are uh, in the target, as the attribute of the target node. So basically, what you would do inside a callback is usually something like event, and you want to do something using event, which is the event dot target, which is the cause of the event, and the node that causes the event dot value. You do we, we do something with the value currently 
so every time the value changes uh, we can do something with the uh, new value of this of this element hmm? um, Luca is asking if I used uh, an event handler in add event listener function inside event handler I if I use event.target it works but visual code tells me that event is deprecated uh, well, event is deprecated is it's a strange error because event it will just the the name of the um, of the parameter of the callback function hmm? so uh, maybe we can we can we can check that uh, by by seeing the code itself okay but basically we are not um, so I I need to see the code and the exact error message hmm? to, to understand uh, sorry to reply um, Basically, we are not we are no longer using uh, add event listener for setting uh, um, for setting the the, the callbacks, uh, but we are directly using the attributes uh, on the JSX elements. So when we create the element, we immediately set uh, the, the event handler there, so that we we can listen say to events at the at the React level and not events at the DOM level. So it would be this syntax on change equal is much more, uh, uh, let's say, it's, it's much simpler than the, the add event listener. The reason is that in React we are creating elements anew every time we are re-rendering. So uh, we don't need to create the elements and then add the event listener. Why we create the elements, we add the event listeners. If we want to add it later, we just recreate the node with the, an even listener that wasn't there before. So we are recreating everything from scratch. Uh, so there's no separation between creating the element and uh, um, registering uh, listeners. Mm -hmm. um, OK, a apart from oh, sorry, the, the, the most important attribute was target, of course. We also have the uh, prevent default that uh, we will use uh, mainly on, uh, on the submission of form and uh, on the buttons okay when we you, you, usually when you click a button inside the form or when you click the submit button inside the form the browser will try to send the form to the server okay and send the form to the server as the side effect of reloading the page and basically res resetting or restarting your application you know, your JavaScript application so usually we don't want that to happen because we want to handle the submission ourselves in, in our code so usually when you have a, a, the uh, on um, on click on a button or on submit on a form uh, usually we want to prevent the default action which is uh, that of submit the form okay uh, in order the other cases the, the default behavior is basically of selecting something that usually usually doesn't make any harm okay but on on the we, we need actually to prevent to stop the submission for for happening because that would kill our application and go the page. Um, if you, in the rare, rare case in which you really need to access the, the low level event, uh, you have an attribute for that, the native event uh, described here. Uh, but really, I, I think it's very, very uh, unlikely that we really need that. Okay. And these are, um, uh, say, attributes that are always present. In, uh, in all uh, in all events and plus uh, we are other attributes that uh, depend on the type uh, of event itself so for example if we have some keyboard event then we have uh, on key press on key up and so on we are uh, the form events that uh, generates an extra type of um, an extra type of event which is the submit and so on so every Every type of element, every type of user action generates different types uh, of events, uh, and the event type is uh, should be uh, here. So if you want to query it, uh, we have a type attribute that is telling you which was the event that caused that. So this only is useful is only useful if you have uh, uh, many different uh, um, event handlers. Sorry, many different events that point to the same event handler that uh, we'll need to um, to decide what to do. Okay. Um, okay. 
for uh, how to define event tenders is something that uh, we, we we may borrow from what, what we know uh, about uh, um, basic HTML. Uh, usually, we can define event tenders as as functions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, there are, in this case, uh, I I wrote an empty function, but just remember that sorry, just remember that uh, the argument usually is the event. Uh, if if you need it, uh, it will be the argument of, of your uh, callback function. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you define this function expression inside the component. Hmm? Um, so it's perfectly possible to have a function that uh, inside will define another function uh, explicitly by giving it a name. And so we have a reference to the event handler to pass around. Okay. Or you can define an inline function also if you want. So if you defined a function like before here by giving it a name, by giving it a reference, you may use this reference to register the event tender, uh, basically by passing the reference to the function itself. Okay. So this handler here would be something like on click if you want, or on change. On, uh, in this case, it's a div, so uh, you need to use on click because on change doesn't exist on a div element. Um, and the ender will be the name of our function. Okay. Uh, in this way, you can reuse the same function in different points of your JSX. So in the case where maybe you have several buttons or several input elements, you may define the function only once and use it many times. This, that's one possibility. The other possibility is just define it online every time. Uh, just be uh, careful that if you're writing that, uh, never put the parentheses here after the function name because in this case that would call the function and try to register the event as an event handler the, the return value of that function which is actually not what we want it will call the function at the definition time take the return value of this that function that normally is undefined and it will set the handler to to this undefined value so it's basically not registering any handler at all uh, and also uh, remember that this is a, a JavaScript object and it's not a string. Hmm? So always use the braces and never use the, the quotes for defining uh, these handlers because we don't need the string with the name of the function, but we need the JavaScript reference to the function itself. So, but uh, uh, always try to remember, uh, it's always a, a mental check that I, that, I, that I try to do when I write uh, some, some callback. Uh, I am I calling the column back right now, or I'm, I may just set in the reference. So always try to avoid calling it. This is the simple case when the handler function doesn't need to do any, doesn't need to receive any parameter, doesn't need to know any information. And uh, also for uh, replying to um, uh, Alessandro, uh, if we need to pass some properties uh, to a function, uh, we cannot do that uh, in the classical way like that, uh, for example, here. That would be an error of... We are trying to pass A and B to this uh, uh, event handler. Uh, but uh, in this case, the effect would be to call the event handler right now and register an undefined callback for the on-click event. So in the case when we have some parameter to pass, we always must uh, define a new function that will be uh, the new uh, function that will be called uh, only when the event fires and that that function will, um, at the call time will use the current value of the parameters a and b uh, through the closure mechanism okay so a and b will be accessible from the callback mechanism because they are in a closure so every time we need to pass some parameters, every time also we need to use the, the event, the, the, the name of the event, the values in the event, we always need to define a new arrow function uh, with the, the specification of which function we want to call. Hmm? Uh, so this is the, is the normal syntax. In many cases, uh, you know, by, uh, by habit, uh, we tend to write an arrow function in any case, even in, in simple cases. Hmm? So we basically the, the possibilities are either uh, having just one reference to a function that will not uh, take any parameters, or uh, but actually it's, it will only get the event. The event is, also, is always passed implicitly because actually when when uh, React calls this function, it will pass the event argument. 
even if we don't see it, it will be passed. So in that case, inside the handler, we may have one argument. Okay, like, like I said uh, before, we may have an event argument uh, defined in the function. Then this reference will be a reference to a function that expects to receive an event, and React will actually pass this uh, uh, argument, this function. Or in more complex cases, of course, in, in, all, in all the other cases, uh, we define our own arrow function. Um, uh, Ivan is asking, is the same problem we had to state uh, without using the arrow function? We're not sure that we use the X. Um, yes, but more. Hmm? OK, so uh, here there are, in this error case here, OK, there, sorry, there are two problems. The first problem is that A and B are evaluated when the component is created and not when, and not when the click happens. This is a, is, a, is a minor problem here, because since we are in a functional setting, A and B will be likely constants. So every time we call this function, A and B will take a new value, and the, the function will be called only once. So uh, it's very unlikely that A and B will change between the instant where the component is created and the instant when the component, uh, uh, when the click event happens. Why? Because maybe even if A and B are a state variable, if we change a state variable, the function is, re is called again. Okay, the rendering is, uh, uh, is repeated. And so the A and B will have a new value uh, according to the updated state. You remember when you are defining state variable with use state, we define it as const. The state is constant. It doesn't mean that it, it will not change in, a, uh, in any way. It only means that in the context of a functional execution, that variable value is not allowed to change. So it's true what you're saying. The problem is that we are using the value of A and B when we define a component and not when the click happens. But if we are writing in a good functional way, that shouldn't be a problem. The real problem is that uh, uh, the onClick uh, property expects a reference to a function, and so it's, uh, it uses, it registers as an ender the return value of this method here. Okay, and whether it returns something or not, uh, but we are calling the handler too soon, and we will not be calling it later. So last, most likely, uh, this will be undefined because we are executing a function, and this function is not expected to return anything, so we are, register, we are not registering any event handler. So there's this double problem, okay? Not just of calling it in the wrong moment, but not actually, actually registering uh, it. Hmm? Um, so always, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, um, an error that is very easy to, to make, okay? Because we are focused on, okay, I need uh, uh, this, this code to happen when I click, but uh, we, when we are focusing our thinking about what to write, what to do, we tend to, to forget uh, to delay the execution okay, at the right moment. And, uh, and not to do it right now, but to tell which is the function that will make it happen later. So this is the only attention point. I'm just, I'm spending time on it just to, to, you know, uh, to, to program some mental trigger when you're writing the codes. Okay, let's check, let's remember, uh, let's ensure that we are doing the right thing. Okay, uh, the real problem with forms uh, is uh, uh, that form elements uh, uh, don't like, basically, how the state is managed in React. Or basically, in a better way, uh, the, the mechanism for handling state in a form element is different from the mechanism of handling state in a React component. So uh, imagine a very simple input value, okay? An input of type text. Uh, we are writing something inside ABC, and so the component itself has a value, as an attribute, which is called value. This value is a state inside the component itself, inside the DOM. Okay, okay. so when we are using a, a form element, some state variable is not inside the, um, a React component, but will be directly inside the input element 
that React will create. Uh, because this is the nature of the input element. The browser does that. Okay, so there's nothing we can do against that. So there is some part of uh, uh, of the state of our application that is not known to React. React doesn't know what happens inside that text box. Okay, so it's uh, the component is called uh, uncontrolled. Basically, we have a state over which we are we don't have any control. Hmm? Uh, probably this uh, this input element will be inside a, a React component. Okay, the component will be I don't know the the name in, the name input. And inside this name input, we will have a state. Okay, name probably is a state variable that we are using to refer to that. And so we have we have a, a clash that inside the React application, the variable name is used to hold the name that we are reading, but inside the DOM, uh, the same value is inside an attribute of a of a DOM node, and we need to keep them in sync basically. We need to ensure that the two are always the same. Because this one in React is the one that our application uses for validation, for saving, for checking, for deleting, whatever. But the other one is the one that is shown to the user because it's part of the page. So we have an extra step to do to ensure that these two pieces of state always have the same value. Um, so basically, the, the problem is that React needs to know which is the value that the user changes directly inside the browser. And so every time the user changes even just a single keystroke here, we need to uh, process that keystroke. So we need to register the, the change event and uh, React so that React can be notified of the new value every time. And so uh, every time the user types a letter here, we have an on-change event. So the change event will be used to update the, the, the state value. OK, this is a pattern that we have to follow, that we have to always follow. OK, but not just that. So on-change, uh, at every change, we need to update the state. But uh, we also have uh, the problem of uh, the state being changed by the React code. So if the React code changing something, set name, uh, whatever, set name, if we call set name, this state variable will be updated, of course, but uh, the form element will not be updated immediately. But that, uh, how can it know that we updated this variable that means nothing to this element? So what we also have to do is that every time we update the state, we must be sure that the value attribute is forced to the new value of the state. So we have to bind uh, in both directions the changes of the state to force a change of value and the change of the value by the user uh, to force an update of the state. How can we do that? We will do that with a technique which is called controlled components. Okay, the concept of controlled components is only um, only makes sense when we are trying to control something that contains a state. So in, this, in the case of forms, um, and uh, is, the, is the preferred method is the is the React way of doing that. In some cases, but we are not going into detail about that, uh, we may also uh, be able to use some uncontrolled components uh, where basically we leave the DOM to do its work uh, and only at the end, maybe a submission of the form, we try to to, to query the DOM element uh, and to, to check the value. Mm -hmm. uh, this is more complicated than it seems because we need in our React code to have a reference to a DOM element that is it's not visible in our code, we are not creating it, so we need to ask React to provide us a reference to the low-level element. It's more complex. Usually we don't we don't need to do that, we try to uh, to stick with the control component uh, uh, pattern. So what does it mean to have a control component? I try to to explain that uh, in, the, uh, in this picture. So imagine we have a form element, imagine your input element, okay, 
uh, which has of course the attribute value uh, as every input element okay and we have a state x in our react component that we want to connect to the value of that component the rule for a control component is always to set these two attributes value and unchange the value attribute uh, enables the left to right uh, synchronization so every time x changes which are our state variable every time x a state x is changed uh, then uh, we are sure that the, uh, the form element will be re-rendered which is the 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 normal behavior of, uh, of react if you are changing uh, a state variable we re-render the component uh, we are if we are if you update the value a property of the component the component itself will be updated so uh, with this uh, value equal to state uh, x we are ensuring that whenever we change the state with the set x uh, immediately the content of the form element uh, the content of the input element will be changed uh, in this case, we have uh, an unpleasant behavior that uh, uh, it's not possible uh, to modify the input element. Because uh, if we have an input element, sorry, an input element whose attribute is value equal to maybe uh, ABC, because we set X to be ABC, so it's here, A, B, C. Uh, as long as this value attribute has the value ABC, if the user tries to type something, I try to type D, this D will never appear. Uh, this D will never appear because uh, um, the component has a forced value for the value attribute. Sorry for the uh, for the uh, for the, the, the sentence. This sentence, okay. Um, the value is forced by React into the component. So even if we, if we try to type something, nothing will appear because this component still has a, a, a value forced by above on it, and it will be um, make the value constant. So we cannot; it, does, it doesn't change. It, is, it will be a very strange input box where you cannot type anything because the value of the input box is not free to change but it's uh, uh, forced. Whenever you try to change something, the component is re-rendered, and uh, uh, when it's re-rendered, we are uh, rewriting the value with the, with the value of the state x. Okay, so this uh, ensures that the, sh the, the, the content of the input box uh, is uh, consistent with the state, but doesn't let you change it. The um, the way of changing it or allowing the user to change it is to uh, handle the on change event that is triggered at every keystroke, as I said. Okay, so we are typing our D. Uh, the D value changes the internal value of the input and generates an on change an uh, on change event. This on change event is a register with a listener change x i call it change x here and this change x will uh, process the event get the value which now is a b c d that contains the keystroke and calls set x set x as alfredo says is a function that we use to update the state x remember we are using a use state hook and so we always have a couple of uh, the name of state variable and the name of the function to update that specific state variable. So usually x set x, y set y, and so on. Hmm? So with the setter. So we are uh, reading the value that the user tried to change with the D, and we are scheduling an update to the state variable x that contains this uh, new value. And whenever the state update is, up, is applied, uh, x will be changed, the component will be re-rendered with a new value of x that at this point also contains the d. And so we close the loop. 
every time we say we 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 type a keystroke uh, we are at every single keystroke uh, we generate an event we capture this event uh, we update the state by scheduling a state change and we re-render the component every time so we are not letting the browser to handle the keyboard itself we are controlling it uh, in uh, in our code and of course uh, here we may have also some uh, some logic behavior okay inside this uh, event lender. So maybe if you don't want uh, your user uh, to write numbers, so you can just prevent the update of the state when the, 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 the keyboard, uh, when the key is, uh, is a number. Or if you want to everything to be in uppercase, you just can convert the value into uppercase before changing the state variable. So you can transform actually what the user types uh, um, don't do strange things because otherwise the user <laughs> will not understand what is happening. Okay, but uh, uh, we may actually decide what happens at every time the user tries to type something. <coughs> Giuseppe is asking um, what this value equal to x does. The value is the attribute of the form element that determines the current content of the input. So if an input element is ABC. Uh, it means that the, the, the attribute of the element in the DOM that represents the content is value. So every time we change value, the content changes. Every time we change the content, value changes. This is the normal behavior at the DOM level. Okay. What we are doing is to set the value attribute using this state variable so that the content of the element will always be our state but um, I mean it's uh, it's something that we are going to uh, to understand better with the example of course uh, Lorenzo isn't it error prone delegating everything to the programmer uh, yes <laughs> yes uh, if you are doing something wrong then your uh, input elements will not update and uh, yeah but it's the it's the react way having everything under control uh, in the component state. Uh, so it, uh, if you are doing some mistakes here, then the user will be stuck and will not be able to, to modify it. And also if you forget something, that, that form will be unusable. Uh, that's our life. But we are good programmers, right? Um, okay, so this is uh, uh, some piece of code that will try to put everything together. But I think uh, we, instead of uh, reading the slides, uh, uh, we can directly um, go to our code, okay? And uh, where is the editor here? In our uh, um, application for, for the scores, okay? So let's imagine here. We have this application where, okay, we already, uh, last time we implemented the, the delete functionality and the rendering of the list, okay? Uh, what we can do today is try to add a form for with these rules a form for adding uh, a new exam okay uh, and so we try to uh, to put into practice uh, uh, the, these concepts and these hints that we we saw in the slides uh, so first of all uh, let me create a form here below in this area uh, uh, below the table let's we create a form for entering the data for a new exam as always, we, let's start small, okay, one step at a time, then we make it better and we refactor it uh, uh, maybe a couple of times to make it better, to make it only appear where we want uh, and so on. But let's start by uh, um, creating the form, okay? So let me create a new component into our exam components uh, uh, file. Uh, maybe I... You want me to increase the zoom a bit more? Okay. Uh, function uh, exam form hmm? so this component uh, will uh, generate uh, a form containing uh, the, the input elements for creating a new exam uh, what would that, would that look like uh, okay let's start always uh, first with a static version and then we try to uh, to make it dynamic okay so we can first set up the 
um, the, the, the layout, the appearance, and then give the properties and later on add in the state, hmm? uh, as always. We still uh, always follow this, this programming pattern. We may <coughs> use normal form elements in HTML, for example, or we may use bootstrap form elements. Uh, React Bootstrap form elements. Um, it's it's basically the same. Hmm? Of course, Bootstrap elements look uh, nicer, but their behavior is more or less the same. So uh, maybe we can start with the basic form, and then uh, you can have a look uh, online at the at the Bootstrap version. So uh, we already published yesterday some, some one branch into the React Scores uh, project. Uh, that is done with the bootstrap components. So maybe let's do that uh, with the basic components here. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we are creating form. Remember the form element does not, doesn't do anything, uh, but it will contain some uh, text, some real, uh, say, uh, input elements, some controls. Uh, we need to provide the exam the score and the date right so uh, the exam uh, could be maybe a, a drop down menu okay so it will be a select element with many options option exam one option exam2, and so on. Then, okay, on the new line, we can have the course, uh, sorry, the score, which is a number, input type equal to text. And then on the next line, we may have the date, input type equal to date, for example. And br, sorry, it's a wrong slash here. And uh, finally, we have a button for submission. Button add. Something like that. Uh, and of course, uh, we insert this exam form component uh, at the end of the table. So we have the exam table component which is our main component that we, uh, we that we render a table followed by the form i don't have any props right now uh, we will add, add them later so let's sort it out before uh, we have an error here because we are now trying to return two components one table and one exam form so we need to rob them into a fragment that will make React. Uh, so probably we'll discover that we need to refactor a bit our components uh, to avoid this, uh, but it's something that we could do later. So with this addition, what do we have? Uh, we have an error, of course. Nothing was returned from render. Yes, 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 you are right, because exam form should have a return of all of this. Okay. Okay, so right now something appears. So I just for I forgot to have the return statement from exam form. Hmm? And so it was just an expression that was computing something, but not returning it to the caller. And I have something that is honestly very, very ugly, but I don't care. We don't have the alignment. We don't have the, the, the fonts and so on. But uh, for the moment, uh, well, let's try not to care about the appearance. We know that if we move to the bootstrap component, they will look uh, much nicer. Okay, But the logic will be the same. So we have a selected where we can choose these values we have the score where we can type anything and we have a date that will pop up at the date selector because of type date just remember that uh, especially the date uh, component will behave differently 
in some cases uh, very differently between Firefox and Chrome and Safari so there because there are sort of new new input types that are not very well developed in all in all browsers okay I can write here because this component is still uncontrolled is not controlled in any way by by react okay uh, and so it's free uh, I can write anything but react has no way has no way of knowing what I'm trying to type here in this form hmm? it's totally unknown to that okay uh, how can I improve it? Um, I need to give the form some state variables for remembering uh, internally to the React component uh, the current value of the form elements. So I need to have a mirror inside the exam component of the state of the form. So I need a, a variable a state variable for the uh, exam course I need a state variable for this I need a state variable for the uh, score and I need a state variable for the date Okay, uh, so in this way, we have three form components and three state variables. Uh, this is the easy implementation. We could make it more complex by creating one state object with different attributes, uh, but it will be more complicated in our case. In, until we have forms with a very long number of elements, uh, it's better to keep these variables separate. Okay one step at a time always so uh, right now we have three state variables three form controls that they are totally disconnected from each other uh, what we could try to do is to force to enforce uh, the value of the form element to be connected to the state to our current state um, Let's, let's start with the score, which is the easiest one. Then we move to the others, right? Let's make one, for the, one, one example, and then we, we learn something by trial and error, and then we, we can also move to the others. So what the, the slides are saying is that to make this input element a controlled input, we should add a value attribute that forces the value, the content of the input to be the same as the score uh, variable so in this way uh, we should uh, be sure that every time the score changes then this is updated if I say this uh, for the moment uh, nothing happens I still may write here something which seems uh, in contradiction with what we said, the value should be forced by the component. It should not be free for the user to type. The reason is a very uh, subtle detail that uh, the current value of score has never be cha been changed, so it's still the default value. And the default value is undefined here because we are not setting a default value in this line. And so here, what we, act, well, what we actually wrote, wrote is a value equal to undefined, which is the same as not setting the value attribute. If, you, if we assign, and we, so we should always assign a default value, for example, the empty string to this, you see that it will change. When we go here, we load the application, OK, and I, I try to type something, believe me, I am pressing the keyboard very hard, but nothing happens. Okay, so always set a default value on your states, because otherwise the value will be undefined and the, and the and React would understand that the component is uncontrolled and let the user type freely. Um, so in this case, we have bound 
the value of the input to the score variable, state variable. And uh, right now, the state variable is still an empty string. We could write uh, something here in the default state. And we see that this uh, will appear as the default value in this input and cannot be changed by us. Okay. So we need to, so we, we, we went halfway, halfway through from the left to the right. We need to do, we complete the loop and uh, handle the updates of the states. So the easiest way is also to uh, register on change. Sorry, uh, there's one thing I want to show you is that, uh, for example, in the console of the, of the browser, we have a warning. You provided, let me try to make it larger. You provided a value prop to a form field without an unchange handler. This will render a read-only field. This is what is happening. We, we cannot change it. If the field should be mutable, use default value for an uncontrolled component. Otherwise, set either on change, and this is what we are going to do, or read only for, uh, for being explicit that the, this element uh, should not be changed by the user. Okay, so always uh, uh, remember that the, the React is always giving you errors and hints and suggestions in the console, okay, or the browser. So let's try to keep it open at all times. So why doesn't it change? Okay, uh, we have a warning that will tell us, that is already telling us why and how to correct it. So let's do it. On change, every time the user tries to change this element, we try to, we will mirror that update into our state variable. So uh, event arrow function body of the arrow function set score to uh, the current value of the element so event dot target dot value okay so we can call set score with a constant value. We don't need a callback here inside set score because we are not uh, uh, considering in any way the old value of the score variable in this case. If we needed to consider the old value, we need a callback in this case, like we learned last week. And this callback is just for handling the, the change event. And every time the value changes, uh, we update the score variable state variable and updating the state variable will uh, trigger a re-render of this component that will apply the new value of the score state to the value attribute of the input and will change the component okay and so if i type something it's happening and not only it's happening it will update, but also if you look at the components state, which exam form as a state of something here. Sorry, I cannot uh, zoom it much more. If I change it by deleting or by changing the text, you see that the state inside the component is changed. So we are inside. The, the exam form component and we have the state the second state variable which is completely aligned with the with the current value of the of the input text hmm? it's 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 strange okay it's strange because we need to do by hand something that do, should be automatic basically okay we are typing here but we need to keep every single variation every single uh, and update the state ourselves okay uh, I know. Okay, so this this for the for the score. Uh, Alfredo is asking. Uh, we wouldn't need a default value. It appears it doesn't change anything as we can input whatever we like. I don't see the difference between putting and not putting the default value. Um, the default value usually we you don't need it. You need the default value for uncontrolled components. Okay, where we have a starting value and then you let the user change. 
uh, if you are setting the if you are trying to set the default value here I, you will probably get an error because the setting the value and setting the default value are incompatible default value is I'm setting a starting value and then let the component run uncontrolled if I want to control the component uh, value and on change okay are the two ones that, that we need to use otherwise it will be rewritten so it, it doesn't have any effect I, I if i remember correctly you also get a, a warning hmm? um, because it doesn't make uh, sense so default value is sorry i didn't mention it before is for uncontrolled components hmm? so we don't use it we use the default of the state we do everything through the state okay so react is happy and this pattern is easy to replicate also <coughs> in the other cases. Uh, in the other cases, when the value is, uh, it's of course a, a string value. Hmm? Uh, in the case of the date, let's try to see it. We can use uh, again a value equal to date and on change equal to let's try to take the event and set date event of target dot value i dropped some parentheses because there was we only have one statement here and one an argument so if we do this uh, we should always we should also have uh, let me reload the page just for to be sure the uh, Ah, sorry. The state. Okay, this is another problem. The state here is undefined on the date because I forgot to put a default value. And uh, oh, sorry. Uh, and uh, when I change the date here, it changes. The state variable changes also, so it's updated. So we have now we see the. Uh, I will show the code uh, again for in a, in a moment. Uh, we have the state updated, okay, uh, and every time we change it with the with the, with the date control, the state variable here changes. But we have some error here. Let's try to read it. A component is changing an uncontrolled input to be controlled. So uh, React initially assumed that this date control was uncontrolled, and then we try we, it became controlled. This is likely caused by the value, value attribute, changing from undefined to a defined value, which should not happen. Okay, remember, warnings are your friends. Decide between using a controlled or uncontrolled input element for the lifetime of the component. This is some sort of a psychological help also. Um, what is the reason? So what we, what we did here was to try to control the component. We are setting a value strongly from the state we are uh, handling uh, the change event so this is the normal pattern for a controlled component the only problem is the initial value of this date which it doesn't have any default okay so if it doesn't have any any default uh, it assumes uh, that the value is undefined and so it assumes that the, the control is uh, um, uncontrolled the input is uncontrolled as soon as we type something, we are calling set date. Set date will set a real value into date, and this date will be used to change the value. And so React will see a component that didn't have a value attribute turn into a component that will have a value attribute. And so say, okay, but are you trying to do a non-control component without the value or a control component with the value? You should be consistent. So again, the solution is uh, putting something here. I don't know if an empty string works because it's a date. Let's see. Let's reload it so that we get rid of the of the of the message. And if you write something, we see that the so we type something is okay. No, it doesn't update here. Uh, so there's something wrong here. Let me because then I, I did I save it here? Yes, save. 
okay you can change okay the state here is empty for the date and it, once we set that one data it will show the the current one okay so it was just a reloading problem okay so uh, the basically the default value here is the initial value that you want to have for your uh, form element uh, and uh, all the rest is just the controllable path control component pattern that we always have this set of uh, uh, of, of statements um, finally we the, the most complex one is the, the list of exams which is a select element uh, we need to control it but first of all we need to set, uh, to, to define a list of exam which is real it's not just uh, and then also we have to, to check the number that this is a number okay it's another step uh, have the, the real list of exams so we need to uh, create this select by uh, creating dynamically the list of options here from the set of available courses so this means that the exam form should receive at least one property with the list of exams of the courses sorry so uh, let's go to where we are calling the exam form and we pass it down the list of courses and with uh, the courses is uh, received already as a prop here in the exam table yes prop.courses okay so we are propagating the courses property that uh, was given to the exam table down to the exam form so the exam form may generate the list of options dynamically now that it, it, con it has the, the access to this courses attribute so let's go again to the exam form and replace this static list of options with a, a dynamic list so we're using a, an expression that takes the list of courses and the maps them each of them every course to a fragment of jxx which is an option fragment and so option the option tag has two attributes one is the sorry uh, one attribute and one content the content is what is written in the in the menu and what is written in the menu is the name of the course course dot name while uh, we need to specify also a value attribute which is the actual value being assigned to the uh, to the element uh, or to the form uh, is uh, uh, it's probably is better to take it from the code hmm? so that we have an identity an, an id which is uh, better than the full name okay so course dot course code something like that okay it looks uh, uh no it's not course name. sorry i forgot some braces here it's not course name but it's brace course name because we want to uh yes to to get the variable okay let's see it let's try it okay so this is the new value of the select it's still uncontrolled that's why i can modify it freely okay so i populated this uh, list of options by using the uh, this uh, by using the list of properties we are we also have one friendly warning each child in a list should have a unique key prop oh yes i, I forgot oh i pretended to forget actually so remember that uh, uh, we are returning a list of option elements and so each of each one should have a key attribute and we can use the course code again as a unique key so it will not complain anymore if we reload it uh, okay uh, it doesn't complain anymore for this list okay 
and we see the, the name of the course, but internally if we examine the component. Okay, we cannot examine it here because uh, it's uh, um, the select is not a React component, so we must go to the basic inspector when we should be able to see the properties of this. Uh, uh, Okay, sorry. It's, uh, I'm okay. Oh, okay, N never mind. I, I, it's, I'm, I'm too zoomed, so I don't find what I'm, what I'm looking for. Um, anyway, uh, each option is a, a key value where it corresponds to the course code and uh, also a value attribute that also remembers when, when we select uh, software engineering actually the value of the select component will be the code of the course not the name not the full name okay this is the normal behavior of select this is uncontrolled we want to make it controlled so value equal to course and uh, on change equal to uh, event handler from event to uh, set course event dot target dot value so this couple of statements couple of attributes will link and control the select um, according to the user selections and just remember that we should provide a default value here. Let's think about the default value in a second, OK? OK, so the three operations we do, setting the default value, setting the value attribute, and setting the on change. Let's see how it works. If I change this, uh, so let's reload it. Okay, if I change this, you see that the state, the first state variable, will contain the code of the updated exam that we selected. And then we have the score, and then we can select the date. And so all the state information here is complete. Um, Lorenzo is telling us that he didn't uh, set the on change event, uh, but he is able to, to change the value. Um, it's most likely because you didn't uh, select uh, the, the default value. So you have uh, an undefined value and the control and the component is uncontrolled. You have set it. So let's try it. So just to be sure. So I'm setting the value. And I'm not setting the actually are so let me reload it. So like start from scratch scratch. You are not changing. So you can open and you can see you you pretend to click but but uh, the the value here is not changed. Hmm? So you are not really able to change it. Uh, okay, value inside the, uh, so let Control Z. Okay, the value here inside the option. Okay, so where you have a you have a menu. Okay, a menu is made of uh, different uh, uh, items. Each item has a, a visible name, which is what we are reading here, software engineering, uh, and uh, uh, an internal value, a sort of an ID. Okay, so these IDs could be one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And the value attribute for the select. So basically, the control is the select. Select will return one value. And the value that returns is a copy of the value attribute of the option that has been currently selected by the user. So the user sees the, the name of the course. When he selects one name, uh, the browser basically takes the value attribute for that specific option that has been selected and uses that as the value of the whole control. Okay. Um, 
and this is a very strange way of, of select to work the basic html version is even is even more complex because it doesn't have a value attribute on the select but it has a selected attribute on the option but let's forget about that uh, marco is asking okay well we, we we didn't set any value here uh, or basically we set the empty string but the browser is uh, showing us a value in any case uh, at the beginning hmm, when we load the application shouldn't it be empty uh, it can't be empty right now because uh, uh, the select is forced to select one of the available options and uh, if we have a state we are trying to set a value with that doesn't match any of the values and so the the browser will just pick the first one uh, which is a, a problem because it picks the first one it shows you the first one but internally it knows here yeah, look at the state it knows that there there are no good one it's not good hmm? it's not valid so we have an inconsistency between we, what is shown and what is uh, uh, known by the component how to correct that well one possibility is to add one fake option okay if we add an, another option uh, with the value of uh, empty string yeah and uh, maybe choose one a message okay so this option should be shown in the case of the default uh, state and uh, okay and you change the state uh, the problem is that you can go back to choose one again and uh, and deselect the element uh, so probably so the the starting state here will be the first element item uh, mapped to the first state hmm? uh, there should be some attribute if i don't remember uh, some uh, disabled yes probably it's disabled that uh, lets you show the choose one but choose one cannot be selected anymore you see that is grayed out okay so at the beginning the state is empty and the uh, the select will render the first element which is the choose one you can choose any other the state is updated but you cannot go back to the to the empty case because the choose the one item is disabled and the user cannot uh, click on it hmm? so this combination gives you probably the, the right behavior that we, we, we all want to, to have. Uh, an initial prompt, an initial prompt uh, so that we can recognize whether the user selected something or not. And then after I select something, I cannot go back to the, to the deselected state. OK. Last step, doing something with this data. So with the Add button, right now it does nothing actually it does some damage because if if i click on add the page flashes you see the page is reloading because uh, the default action for the button inside the form is to submit the form itself okay we want to prevent that we don't want that okay so we need to associate some behavior some sensible behavior to the add button In fact, the other right now doesn't do anything. So we uh, may be something a bit more complex than just a set state. So we define a function, const uh, handle add is a function that gets an event and does something. And we can associate with this button the on click to handle add. So that we don't have to write everything in line here inside the button. And one thing that is important for us is that uh, we want to prevent uh, the default behavior on this event. So right now if we try to press the button actually nothing should happen so let's try it again if we press the button you see that nothing happens of course but uh, um, more interestingly uh, the page doesn't reload hmm? 
so we prevented what we didn't want to happen okay and now we can add some behavior we can pick the course code the score and the data and create a new exam object to be added to this list okay um, so here we can create a new uh, exam object by getting the course code uh, to be right, let's remember the names of the the exam is a as a course code score and date attributes right so here we have a course code which is taken from the course at the state that's also why i use the um the the course code and not the course name uh, in the state hmm? and in the option and then we have a score score that score so o -R -E, that is taken from the score attributes state and we have data that is taken from the data but just remember that data is uh, here the state here is a is a string so we should probably convert it to JS because in our program the date attribute is a DJS object and let me import also DJS uh, yeah yeah um, I have a question from Alessandro who was asking, uh, um, I think, uh, about uh, the default action for state and the choose one option. I think uh, your question was still about this. And uh, yes, of course, we could have uh, forced uh, as a default state uh, the first uh, um, the first course in the, in the courses array. Um, it's, it's another possibility. We could force any, uh, say, legal value to this, uh, to this default value. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, OK, in a way, we want to, sh to let the user choose instead of pre-selecting. It, it's a choice. Bo both of them would work. OK, so here you could also write something like props dot course. This dot the uh, first element dot course code. And that will work in that way. Hmm? Uh, yes, of course, if there are no courses in the prop, uh, that would be an undefined error. Let's think about the errors later. Hmm? Um, what do we copy the whole option inside the use state as a default value? No, 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 because we are using it in a different way. So if you are, uh, if you want to copy here option, something like that, and so on, uh, as a state, uh, then imagine putting this string uh, here as a value. Uh, this course should only contain the value string, not the whole, uh, let's say, uh, HTML or level JXX for creating the component. Okay, let's try to keep the values separated from the component, from the layout. Okay, um, because uh, uh, this it, it wouldn't change anything because if you if you delete this one, okay. Uh, Alessandro, if you delete this one and you try to put some strange value into the state, uh, the effect is just uh, of setting an initial value that here, an initial value that doesn't match any of the values. So we are back to square one. We are back to the f to the first uh, item which is already highlighted but not really selected. Hmm? Okay. Uh... Oh, so let's go back to the states. Okay, of course, this one needs to be validated. Huh? We must ensure that the course is not empty. We must ensure that the score is a number and so on. For the moment, let's forget about this. We'll add validation after that because I want to show you 
uh, something working before the break okay uh, then we th we come back and think about uh, uh, what uh, how many things can can go wrong with this setting we have an exam object let's, let's assume so must do validation but let's assume we did and the values are correct and we want to right now update the list of exams but the list of exams is not mine it's a state of the exam table and so as the exam table already has a callback for deleting an exam that we already used last week in the button we you it should define the exam table component should define also another exam Uh, that will take the one exam object and add it to to the list of exams and uh, so basically we are setting exams we are adding one element uh, to the state so just remember we cannot do this uh, exams uh, dot push exam there is no no for two reasons one exams is, is a constant of course we can modify it um, directly so the exam the, every modification of the state should always go through a use a set state set exams uh, and uh, we should uh, use a method for creating a new array of exams remember you should always create new ones uh, starting from the previous one so we already have some current value which is the old value of the exams uh, and we need to replace it with a new array that contains all the previous values plus the new one okay so one, there are many ways of doing that. The easiest one is just to uh, destructure the old exams uh, and then adding the new exam. Right. Let's, say, let's call it new exam here, so it's clear. So we need a callback function because we are modifying the state based on the old value of the state we need not to modify this old exam which is just a dummy parameter that wouldn't have any effect modifying this one uh, but we need to create a new array with the updated value so with all the old values plus the new one and that's all i i hope so if i take the add exam i need to pass it as a property it will be a function property in this case to down to the form so uh, add exam equal to add exam and right now inside exam form i should be able to call props dot add exam with the exam that i just inserted cross our fingers we choose uh, what is missing cloud computing we select 25 and the date is uh, tomorrow add okay a new element appears here in the table with cloud computing with the data we just entered okay uh, thanks to this to the action uh, the add action of this form we modify the state inside the, the exam table through the callback with the value that we just uh, um, received and we just collected from the form okay uh, there are still a lot of problems here okay it's not fine it's not finished it's not uh, secure because uh, uh, I could, for, uh, for example, add many times the same component and it will also give a warning for the keys. Uh, so it creates, and uh, if I instead of 25, I write uh, hello, it will store a hello as a score. So 
it, there's no let's say sanity checks here okay this is just the basic structure but we can you know add some checks and some sanity uh, to this form to make it better of course um, but the basic mechanisms uh, I think uh, uh, it's it's, uh, it's it's always the same okay the, the key points are managing the state of the courses here at the high level component and inside the form component we are managing a local state which is just used to drive the the, the controls and when and on the submit action on the some button action we actually process the data and you see that in this case here in this line we are just processing our internal state we don't care about the select the option the input and so on we already have everything we need into the state variables and we use them to do whatever we need in this case uh, trying to add a new exam okay so i think we we got to a point when where something can be seen <laughs> um, and and played with so i think it's a good uh, moment to to break also because it's uh, 10 minutes past 10 so i i will uh, uh, push this uh, code into on github and also put you the, the, the updated link to the, to the repository it's the same as last week we are just uh, uh, pushing over it and uh, uh, so that you can also see my code and check it and we can meet uh, after the break just for maybe adding some checks and then uh, moving uh, on to the next uh, topic which is uh, um, uh, the context uh, i only wanted to uh, show you but I not uh, let's say commenting them uh, there are some slides here at the end from slide 20 forward that will give us some hints uh, to uh, manage the arrays uh, in the state so we already know that uh, we must update the state with a callback that will need to return needs to return a new uh, a new array okay so here are just some examples, uh, like a uh, uh, cut and paste code uh, for adding a new item to an array. So if you want to do that, you can use the concat method and not the push method because push modifies the array and doesn't return anything. Concat uh, creates a new array and returns it or just using the structuring for adding at the head or at the, at the tail. You must, uh, if you want to update the items in an array, uh, usually you we have some code like this uh, where you are mapping the old array into a new one which is exactly the same for all position except the position that you want to change where you can return a different item or if you want to uh, this is a more complex when you are want to update an array but this array contains not just simple values but it contains objects this slice is telling you that you need to return a whole copy of an object you don't want to modify the old objects but create new ones so uh, the rule is always uh, to create everything from scratch and also for removing we already saw that last time with the delete uh, we just use a filter for returning uh, everything except uh, that element with the code that we know or with the index that we know so this is a four or five slides uh, just to uh, help us remember the javascript uh, javascript constructs that will help us in uh, writing these set state uh, callbacks uh, when we have arrays uh, how to avoid mutating the state array but always creating new ones uh, with a additional modified or removed element okay so but that's all that's really all for uh, the first hour so uh, i will give you some break and uh, for 15 minutes uh, and we see we meet back at uh, 10:25 if you're okay with that